All right. So Diddy's third bail hearing. Huh. Yeah. It sounds like from what you've told me, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, there really is. Um, With this whole legal situation. A lot going on. And, and you know, it's yeah. especially fascinating because we've got Elizabeth Milner. Right. You know, reporting for law and crime, like right there in the courtroom. Exactly. And having that inside scoop, I think, is really going to help us in this deep dive to really break down what happened and what might be next. Absolutely. It's invaluable. So to kind of get us started, can you remind everybody, like, what led up to this even needing a third bail hearing? Yeah. So Diddy's been in federal detention for about two months now, facing some pretty serious charges. Right. Um, and you know, just to be clear, the purpose of a bail hearing isn't to determine whether somebody's guilty or innocent. Right. It's really to assess, you know, are they a flight risk or a danger to the community oh, right. if they're released while awaiting trial? So it's really about can this person be trusted to basically stay put and not cause any further problems? Yeah. Are they going to show up for court? Right. Are they going to potentially tamper with witnesses, things like that? Got it. Okay, so that makes sense. So that's what the judge is trying to figure out. So what were the main arguments against granting him bail this time around? Well, the prosecution's strategy really seems to be to paint Diddy as this powerful, influential figure mm -hmm. who could obstruct justice, you know. Right. They're alleging that he's been reaching out to victims, um, trying to tamper with witnesses. And, and what kind of evidence did they have to back that up? Well, that's where it gets kind of interesting. Okay. They've made these allegations, but they haven't really provided a lot of substantial evidence yet mm -hmm. to support these claims. And and it seems like Judge Subramanian, you know, right. was really picking up on that, okay. pushing them for more concrete proof. So that's where we get this, like, everyone's saying the judge seems skeptical of the prosecution's case. Yeah, he wasn't buying it, just based on their word. So... Did the defense, like, address these allegations directly? Oh, absolutely. And their counter strategy, you know, seems to be emphasizing Diddy's willingness to comply with some, like, really strict bail conditions. Okay. You know, just to minimize that flight risk. So, wait, hold on. This is like a, what, $50 million bail package? That's right. $50 million? We're talking 24-7 security, no internet, no phone access, very limited visitors. The whole nine yards. That sounds more like house arrest. It really does, yeah. It's, then, then freedom. Yeah, I mean, you're technically not behind bars. Right. But, you know, your freedom is severely restricted. And we've seen this before, right? We have. Where, you know, a high-profile individual is facing some charges. Right. And they're given some pretty strict bail conditions. Exactly. And the judge actually brought up a recent case. Yep. Um, Mike Jeffries, the former CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch. Okay, yeah. He was granted bail. A ten million dollar package. Ten million. Oh, while facing similar charges, so you know. Oh, so this is interesting. This could set a precedent. Yeah. So he's considering that as he makes his decision. Yeah. I mean, this work gets really interesting, right? You've got the big money. Right. You've got these legal precedents. Yeah. You've got a celebrity defendant. All the ingredients. What does this say about our justice system? Right. And how it handles these types of cases. Yeah. I mean, are we really? When you have someone with a lot of money and power. You know, is it a level playing field? Yeah, that's a big question. And I think we should definitely unpack that a little bit more. But before we do, yeah. let's talk about what was going on in the courtroom. Right. Because it sounds like that was a whole other scene. Oh, yeah. And we'll get into that right after this. It was like packed, you know, wow. with reporters, spectators, everybody wanting to see what was going to happen. So in the middle of all this... Diddy's family's there, right? Like his kids. His kids were there. And his twins are what, like 17? 17 years old. Yeah, so Elizabeth Milner was saying it was, you know, very emotional. Oh, I can imagine. To see, you know, your father facing these accusations. Yeah. Like surrounded by lawyers and cameras. It makes it real. It does. You know, the human cost of all this. Absolutely. And um, Milner also said that Diddy, like, you know, he beamed at his family. He blew kisses. He mouthed, I love you. Right. Like, do you think that was genuine or was that, you know, oh, strategy? I mean, it's hard to say. Right. You know, he's obviously a very savvy guy. Yeah. You know, who understands image and all that. But right. at the same time, like, if you're a parent yeah. in that situation, you're going to want to reassure your kids. Of course. So it, it's tough to know for sure. And it makes you think, like, how do public figures navigate all this, right? Tightrope walk. 
because everything's scrutinized. Especially now with social media. Oh, forget about it. Yeah, every move is analyzed. Yeah. So it brings us back to that bigger question. Like, what does this whole case say about our justice system? That's the million dollar question. You know, is it really, is justice really blind? Right. Or does wealth and influence give you an advantage? And, you know, like, we talked about his defense team putting forward this huge bail package. Yeah. Most people couldn't even dream of that. No. So is that leveraging his financial status? Right. To potentially get a different outcome. So the whole point of bail is supposed to be about risk. Right. But it sounds like it can be tied to, you know. It can be. How much money you have. Yeah. Like, can you afford your freedom, essentially? So this case really, like, puts a spotlight on that whole, you know. It does. That tension. Yeah, for sure. Makes you think. Is there a way to make bail fair? It's a huge question. For everybody, regardless of, you know. A lot to unpack there. Yes, that's a whole other deep dive. So Absolutely. You know, going back to Diddy's situation. Yeah. You mentioned that the judge must look at the Jeffries case. Right. What else could affect his decision? Well, I think a big one is going to be how strong the prosecution's evidence really is. Okay. You know, can they back up these claims of obstruction? Right. You know, with hard proof. Because the judge seemed like he wanted more. He did. He wanted more than just allegations. Yeah, he was like, show me the receipts, basically. Exactly. So that's going to be key, I think. So the judge has a lot to think about here. He does. You know, how serious the charges are, how yeah. strong both sides' arguments were, mm -hmm. public scrutiny, the impact on Diddy's yeah. family. It's a lot, yeah. It's a lot. Very complex. It's complicated. Yeah. And as we wait to see what he decides. Right. You know, I think it's good to step back and think about what this means. Yeah. Like, not just for Diddy. Bigger picture. But for how we think about justice. 